Uh, my name is David Green and I'm the Vice Chancellor and Chief Executive of the University of Worcester and it's a great pleasure to welcome you to the University. Now one of the things that the University is very committed to and we've been committed to for many years is sustainability. And in fact we've changed the whole way in which we present the work of the University every year in our annual review by working it through the Sustainable Development Goals of the United Nations. But there's a lot more to it than just policy. The University of Worcester was one of the first universities in the country to sign the United Nations Sustainable Development Accord. We're deeply committed to it. We report on how we're doing every year. And I'm delighted to say that when the Times Higher uh, Education first reported on this, the University of Worcester was number one in the UK, not only for gender equity, but also for quality education. So let's make sure that we get number one in all sorts of categories. Together we can do it. Thank you very much. My name's Katie Boone. I'm Director of Sustainability. Having declared a climate emergency last year, the University set a target to be net zero carbon by 2030. We've been measuring and reporting our carbon since 2008, both direct and indirect emissions. Our total carbon footprint in the academic year 2018-19 was about 22,000 tonnes. Since we began reporting, our direct carbon emissions have reduced by about 50%, but our indirect carbon is up by about 17%. Why is this? Direct carbon is the energy we use and the vehicles we own, and we've made lots of changes to the lighting, heating, invested in on-site renewable energy, and changed our fleet vehicles to be electric. Therefore, they have gone down. Since 2009, We've had a revolving grant and we've used this to invest in changing the lighting on campus to very efficient LEDs. We've also been improving the fabric of our buildings to make them more energy efficient by adding insulation and double glazing. We've also invested significantly in solar thermal and PV panels to heat our hot water and to generate our own electricity. We've been helping students and staff to change their behaviour as well since 2010. This year, for example, the resident students took part in student switch off, over half of them learning ways in which to save energy. However, we can't do this on our own, and it saves carbon and money if we share heating and cooling with others and create a community heat network. The university is working with the councils to see if we can do this in Worcester, and we have a government grant looking at a techno-economic feasibility study to see if we can do this based around the university's campuses. The heat source of this might be the river or perhaps drilling down to find a geothermal heat source. This is currently being investigated. We have a grant from government to audit all our buildings and to work out exactly what we need to do, when and how much it will cost us so we can publish a credible action plan to decarbonise. Indirect carbon emissions have gone up in this period because the university has doubled in its students and staff and gone from one campus to three. Our total carbon footprint of 22,000 tonnes, just over 3,000 tonnes, comes from the energy used on campus. But most of our carbon, about 14,500 tonnes, comes from the things that we buy and how our students and staff travel to campus. The university is very committed to getting to zero carbon and some of the activities we've been trying to reduce our indirect carbon emissions comes from our work in our canteens. Low carbon meals are promoted to nudge us all to reduce our meat and dairy consumption and increase eating more plant-based foods. We've been working across Europe sharing best practice with other universities to increase sustainable travel. We have a bike share scheme which includes e-bikes and we're looking at expanding this fleet with other organisations in the city to see if we can reduce car commuting. To reduce procurement, we work with our suppliers. We offer them a free tool that they can use to work with their own supply chains to reduce their emissions. In June, we had 430 suppliers registered who've committed to 9,000 actions and nearly 4,000 of these are actually completed or currently being worked on. 
Having identified what makes up our carbon footprint, we've also worked out that we can reduce it by 50% in the next nine years. So what about the rest of the carbon? How are we going to remove that from by 2030? We need to invest in credible schemes that will take carbon out of the atmosphere, such as planting trees or soil conservation projects. In short, we're aiming to be low carbon and high nature. Our biggest area of impact are students and staff. That's about 12,000 people, or about 10% of the population of Worcester. To help our race to zero, people really need to understand carbon and what are the high impact solutions. So we offer carbon literacy training to all. It's important when our students graduate that they leave with the skills, knowledge and experience of climate action and sustainability. We think students and staff working together on projects they've designed is the best way to do this. We offer students volunteering and paid jobs to support these activities. Last year, we had 16 teams engaging about 800 staff and students. Here's some examples of their projects. Huzzah, a zero waste online swap shop to students. A visual style for the staff mental health network. Introducing ergonomic and energy saving cleaning methods. Nature comes on campus supporting well-being. Take a break campaign. Peaceful spaces to decompress. Promoting low carbon meals in the canteen. Bring the climate emergency into education. Hedgehog highways and conservation. Encourage sustainable travel to campus. Teaching children sustainability through library activities. Swapped paper systems to digital. Move the world. Teaching children sustainable development goals. My name is Eleanor Langthorne. I work in the School of Education. We provide an introduction to the SDGs in the core professional studies programme for all of our secondary teachers in training. It includes the background to the goals, a critical evaluation of the roles and responsibilities of educators, and insights on how the SDGs can be taught in practice. This year, we held an Educator Climate Assembly to support the development of a course on education in climate emergency. This innovative programme includes elements of carbon literacy, nature connectedness, climate anxiety, and the SDGs. My name is Paolo Mora, and I teach brand management. Nowadays, consumers demand sustainable and responsible brands and small and large corporations are using the United Nations Sustainable Framework. My students implement the same tools used by these companies to measure their impact and identify areas for possible strategic development. Hello, my name is Rachel Cooper. I teach responsible business and accounting and finance at Worcester Business School. How are we going to finance zero carbon? Businesses are looking for graduates with knowledge, skills and experience to make this happen. Our aim is to inspire future business leaders and we bring experts in to explore what is really happening. How do businesses report and deliver results? There is momentum and our graduates are ready. Hi, I'm Daniel and as a psychologist, I'm interested in social forces on our behavior, including altruism, such as kindness and helping behavior and the role it can play in romantic long-term relationships. In a paper published recently, we looked at pro-environmentalism we found that people find it desirable in long-term partners, and also we display it more in the presence of potential partners. In our courses here in psychology, we look at global themes, including climate change and the environment, so that students can understand the role of psychology in helping make a difference in the world. My name's Alan Dixon, and I've been doing research and teaching in sustainable development for over 25 years, and I'm looking at the interrelationships between society and the environment in sub-Saharan Africa. I've been exploring how wetlands contribute to food security, poverty reduction, and climate resilience. I work with different stakeholders to develop wetland management strategies that balance development with environmental sustainability. 
This informs the teaching on our geography courses, such as our fieldwork to Malawi, where our students gain first-hand experience of sustainability and climate change issues in the Global South. I'm Ian Maddock, and I'm a geographer and professor of river science. My research involves investigating ways to use uncrewed aerial vehicles or drones to map and measure rivers, in particular their morphology and their flows. At Worcester, we're also using drones to monitor soil erosion and provide evidence of the best farming practices to reduce soil runoff into rivers that can cause pollution. Rivers have suffered greater ecological declines than any other part of our natural environment, and the results of this research can help us restore our rivers and enhance biodiversity.